Well, what a time it is. What a time it is in the world. We are in the midst of a pretty interesting time. There's a war in Ukraine, um, pretty devastating. There's China is becoming more hostile. Interest rates are going up. Uh, inflation was at 5%, and then two, five minutes later, it's at 7%. And then in, interest rates go up again. It's like, it's crazy. Even no, nothing's safe. Even iceberg lettuce isn't safe. If you want to buy a lettuce these days, um, you know, you have to really splash out. It's a, it's a, who would have thought in 2022, lettuce would become a status symbol? You know, are you having lettuce in your burger or is that cabbage? <laughs> Things are weird. Things are hard right now. We're living in a very interesting time when it's like, there's lots of examples we can draw from the past that, yeah, it was sort of like this, but also it's sort of like nothing. We've never really gone through what we're going through now. And, you know, we just bought a house, and so as a homeowner, every time you hear the words interest rate rise, your ears prick up and a little bit of anxiety comes in, uh, and then you hear news like a forecast, 20% drop in the housing markets, um, and, and, you know, it's, it's crazy. And the temptation is to be fear-filled instead of faith-filled, to be fearful instead of faith-filled. The truth is that God's purpose on our lives isn't stopped by the, by the fuel prices, God's hand and his, his work on our life isn't stopped by interest rates or inflation. God having an impact through you isn't stopped by the price of iceberg lettuce. God has a plan and he's, he's the same yesterday as he was today and as he is going to be tomorrow. He is God. And so if you're anxious in this season about, you know, uh, the, the, the finances, the what's going to happen, all these sort of stuff. If you're looking for the mir- miraculous blessing and the power of God on your life, if you want to have a brighter tomorrow than you did yesterday, then the key is in this, and this is for each and every one of us. The key in this next season is shifting from independence to dependence in God. Shifting from independence to dependence in God. We're going to look at the story of David. When David was a king, he'd been through this massive journey, and David was a man after God's heart. He was a good guy, so he's a good guy to sort of look at and measure and take lessons from. And so he was king, and his kingdom was flourishing. He was winning all of his wars. He was defeating all of his enemies. Everything was flourishing. He had a lot of wealth and money, and everything was good. And uh, who knows when things are going well, that can sort of be a signal for a dangerous territory that we're about to enter. And uh, so in 1 Corinthians 21, verse 1, it says, Satan rose up against Israel and caused David to take a census of the people of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the army, take a census of all the people in Israel from Bathsheba in the south to Dan in the north. Bring me a report so that I may know how many there are. But Joab replied, May the, uh, may the Lord increase the number of his people a hundred times over, but why, my Lord, do you, uh, why, my, why, my Lord, the king, do you want to do this? Uh, are they not your, all your servants? Why must you cause Israel to sin? Things were good for David. Things were good. But he called out this census so that he could measure everything that he had control over. And, and, it's, and it's such a slight little detail, but what that symbolized was that rather than relying on God and having faith in God, he was looking at everything he had as his security. He was looking at all of the wealth and all of the army and all of the people and all these things that is disposable for his security. And rather than, you know, acknowledging the, the giver of these things, he found independence in the fruit from the previous seasons. And how much can we rely on our achievements instead of God? How much can we find comfort in our own ability? If uh, we, can, we can get fearful instead of faith-filled, we can logic our way out of all these things instead of listening to the voice of God. You know, God um, knew that Satan had got the better of David and caused him to forget God. And so in verse 7 it says, God was very displeased with the census. He punished Israel for it. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel and 70,000 people died as a result. Gee, so God punished David for doing the census. But uh, what I find really interesting about this is if you zoom out from that, the punishment was actually a blessing into freedom. See, the plague might have felt painful in the moment, David losing 70,000 people, um, but it actually released Israel from pride. 
it actually brought Israel to their knees again. And being brought to your knees is never a fun experience, but on the other side of it is freedom. And so that's what David found in that situation. And I want to ask you, has God allowed you and I to go through challenging times in in our finance or in our family or in our life so that we can be brought back to dependence on God? You know, maybe it's obvious, you know, that monumental moment when our finances just got thrown out, we lost our job, you know, these terrible things can happen. Maybe it was a monumental moment like that, that you're just like, wow, actually, maybe that's God working through me. But there's a way that God does it for each and every one of us. He's inviting us into this way of bringing ourselves to our knees. And that is through tithing. See, the purpose of tithing is actually to put God first regularly in our finance. It's to bring ourselves to our knees on the weekly in our finance. And the best thing about tithing is it's preventative. It's preventative. It's like taking your vitamins in the morning. I've started taking vitamins I'm not even 25 yet, and I've started taking vitamins. I don't know. But tithing, it's like that. It's preventative. It helps keep you healthy. It helps keep you away from pride. Deuteronomy 14, 23b says, The purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your lives. To always put God first in your lives. That's its purpose. Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. Honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all of your income, and he will fill your barns with wheat and barley and overflow your wine vats with the finest of wines. Who wants their wine vats to be overflowing in, uh, in 2022? Malachi 3, 7 to 11 says, Now return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. But you ask, how can we return when we have never gone away? Verse 8, it says, Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me, but you ask, what do you mean? When we, when we did not even ever cheat you. He said, you cheated me of the tithes and offerings that were due to me. You know, you, had, you relied on your own strength instead of me. You relied on your own control over things instead of me. Verse 10 says, bring all your tithes to the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, the Lord's, the, the, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open up the, the windows of heaven to you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. You know, that's all of us tithing, all of us playing our part. There, there will be enough food for everyone. He's saying, he's saying, hey, if you contribute, if you do this, there will be a blessing poured out to you. Your crops, verse 11, your crops will be abundant for I will rebuke the devourer for you so that you will have Uh, so that it will not destroy you, that the fruits of your soil and your vine in the field uh, shall not fail to bear, uh, says the Lord of hosts. See, tithing is the antidote, antidote that keeps us relying on God in every season. It moves us from you know, a, a independence, a, a trust in me to a dependence on God. And can I tell you that we were designed for dependence. Uh, what the world is really struggling with in many ways is this ability to be independent, to, to make things work on our own. And you can see the fruit of that. The world is a mess, like I was mentioning before. The world is a mess because dependence was removed from God and into ourselves. Well, we're human. I know I'm human. I know that I'm you know, a, a sinner. I'm broken. And so why would I put my trust in me when I'm designed to put my trust in God? So tithing is the antidote that keeps us relying on God in every season. And heart for the house is an offering above the tithe. So if you're not tithing and you, you call Ocean's home, you feel like you want to pursue God, then maybe start with tithing. Just start with tithing. If you're going through a challenging time, finance being devoured, begin to tithe. Maybe God is allowing you to go through a difficult season. He's allowing you to struggle so that you can be brought on your knees before God and have a faith-filled moment with God. Now we pick up the story of David um, and, and this is where, you know, God restores David. David's a good guy, so he's got a good heart and he came back around. And so in 2 Samuel 24, um, starting at verse 18, it says, that day God, uh, Gad came to David. Uh, is that Gad or God? What do you have? Yeah, Gad, good. I didn't want to, I didn't want to get that wrong. That day, Gad came to David and said to him, Go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor for Aronora. Uh, 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 Arona. Sorry, my bad. A fleshing 
threshing floor of Arona. That's a hard sentence to say. The Jebusite. So David went up and did what the Lord commanded him. So God said, uh, Gad, Gad said, come and build an altar. Is that Gad? Can someone fact check me? I'm doubting myself now. A little bit of doubt. I've become fear, fearful, not faith-filled. The key, the key to get, getting out of your situation is obedience. And I think the thing is, is we have the natural tendency to try and work our way out of things. I know I'm a very logical person. So if I look at a problem, uh, I will approach that from the, the, you know, the start of the problem. I'll be like, well, that's a practical thing. You know, let's try and fix this and fix that and that will be solved. Whereas Dan and Kelsey, I'm always challenged by because they're like, they're like, oh, there's a problem. God, what's this problem about? And I'm like, why am I more like that? I need to be more faith-filled. Uh, I'm very logical, and I think that's what we can do in our finance. That's what we can do in our lives. There's a problem with my family. I need to work to sort that problem out. There's a problem with my finance. I need to do a budget and make it all work and get advice and listen to this podcast and put my money in Bitcoin and all these things. I'm going to work my way out of it. But when we come before God, you know, God is inviting us to come before our needs. We don't actually have to logic our way, smart our way, ability our way out of anything. He's actually inviting us to come before him, come before the altar. Uh, and so, you know, uh, David went off to go by the threshing floor to make an altar uh, so, that, so that he would stop the plague. And, uh, and it goes on to say, take it. Um, so Ar- Aronora says, take it, uh, my lord, the king, and use it as you wish. Here are oxen for the burnt offering. Uh, and you can use them uh, on the, you can use the, the threshing boards and the ox yokes for the wood to build the fire on the altar. I'll give it all to you, your majesty, and may your Lord accept, uh, may your Lord, may the Lord your God accept your sacrifice. So Arona offered the sacrifice on behalf of David. He was so generous, super generous. He's like, hey, I want to honor you. I will pay for the sacrifice. Let me cover this. I've got the bill. And, uh, and I, I really, I'm intrigued by what happens next because, you know, I think if David, was meant to, if David was to take that, I don't think it would have meant a whole lot. There's no personal cost to him. And so if there's, a, if there's a, something that needs to go on in your heart, someone else can't sort that out for you. Someone else can't give or sacrifice their way out of that for you. Um, I don't think it would have meant a whole lot if Arona had sacrificed on his behalf. And there's a couple of really good quotes that, uh, Jerry Forwell says, nothing of spiritual significance comes without sacrifice. Your spirituality will always be measured by the size of your fa- uh, sacrifice. Erwin Lutzer says, those who give much without sacrifice are reckoned as having given little. Those who give much without sacrifice are reckoned as having given little. And so it goes on to say, King David replied to Arona, no, I insist on buying it. For the full price, I will not take what is yours and give it to the Lord. I will not present burnt offerings that have cost me nothing. So David gave Arona 600 pieces of gold in payment, for the, uh, in payment for the threshing floor. David built an altar to the Lord and sacrificed the burnt offering and peace offerings. Uh, in 2 Samuel 24, 25, the story picks up and says, And the Lord answered his prayer for the land, and the plague of Israel was stopped. So David chose a personal sacrifice. David said, hey, this is something that God's leading me in. I'm going to do this. And, and so he came before the altar and made a sacrifice towards God. And so there's so many things we can take out of this. I'm just going to take out four points from this message. The first one is, uh, David didn't want to cheapen his worship. He didn't want to cheapen his worship. He didn't want his worship not to cost anything. So David refused to let someone else pay what God had called him to pay. You and I are accountable to what God calls us to do, not what someone else, you know, is going to do. It was David who asked God. Uh, it was David who, who God asked, not Arona. So often we, we can see a way out of sacrifice. I think in church we can look at other people and say, you know, they're the worship leaders. They're going to be the ones that worship. Or they're the pastors, they're the ones that are going to be, you know, chasing after God. Or they're the prayer team, they're the war room. They're going to pray and they're going to see these things. But hey, if God is calling you to sacrifice something, then that sacrifice has to come from you. 
And I don't know what God's leading you in, but, you know, don't cheapen the sacrifice. Don't cheapen the worship. If God's calling you to something and, and you're feeling it, then go all in. Hold back nothing and you will see answers to your prayer. You will see freedom poured out in your life. Let's be hungry and open-handed to God. Let's take control of our own sacrifice. Let's not cheapen His worship. Let's take it. Let's go hard. The miracle, number two, is the miracle is released on the other side of sacrifice. And that's so true. The miracle is released on the other side of sacrifice. As God, as good as this sounded to David, he knew that he couldn't accept it. He knew that the miracle uh, could only come about on the other side of his sacrificial obedience. He knew that the miracle could only come out on the other side of his own obedience to God. The miracle was released on the back of the sacrifice not after, but on the back of the sacrifice. When he made the sacrifice, the plague stopped. So first obedience, worship and sacrifice, then the miracle and the plague was dropped. Full obedience, not partial obedience, not, hey, here's a free threshing floor. No, God called him to go buy the threshing floor. So be obedient and see the miracle released in your life. You know, we want, we want the obedience without the sacrifice and then we wonder why we don't get the breakthrough. We want the obedience without the cost and we wonder why we don't see the miracle. And Avorna didn't realize that he was robbing David of the miracle, robbing David of the joy of sacrificial worship and, uh, and, and the result of the miracle. If David didn't do the sacrifice, then the miracle wouldn't have happened. So, so David, yeah, David paid for it. And so God's answer here, God is the answer here, not somewhere else. And I love this saying from last year um, that we really coined for our heart for the house in 2021. My church is my responsibility and our world is our responsibility. My church is my responsibility and our world is our responsibility. Hey, if you call Ocean's home, this is your place. This is your house. It's like owning a home. I feel like we're going to get the keys tomorrow and walk in. I'm going to be like, this is our house. Like this is, we're going to fix that and make this great. And I've got a vision and it's going to be awesome. And this is your house. This is your church. This is your place. This is your avenue to see people reached every Sunday. This is our church and, and our world is our responsibility, our workplace, our family, our finance is our responsibility. Our city, the city of Perth is our responsibility. Number three is that the house of God is built on sacrifice. You know, this was the site of a temple, a place of the presence of God. And the temple was built serving the generations. And, you know, this church is built on sacrifice. Shafe and Jess are from Albany. They're our senior pastors. They're from Albany, from Melbourne, moved to Melbourne for a bit and then had a call in their heart to move over to Perth and plant a church. And they used their house deposit to plant this church. So it cost them. It actually financially cost them. And, uh, and then since then, there's just been so many incredible people that have sacrificially given all of our lead team, people that have helped build the church, so many people in this room that have sown and given and given up jobs and given up things and time and energy and finance to make this happen. Given up, you know, even sometimes time with family to make this happen. It came as a sacrifice. But here's the thing, is their sacrifice led to the miracle that is Ocean's Perth. You know, we're talking 50 salvations. We're talking 30 rededications. We're talking 42 baptisms. Come on, we're talking 20 people coming through Ocean's Academy. Come on, I feel like we need to get louder. Come on, isn't that exciting? You know, people healed, people delivered from anxiety, people physically having things healed. Um, you know, me and Ash, we've experienced healing. We've experienced miracles and blessing and favor and abundance. We're buying a house. And, and to think that two years ago, I, like I'd given up my jobs to go full time here at Oceans, but not, have, um, not rely on any income. And uh, we were ready to sacrifice a wedding. We were ready to sacrifice timelines. Um, and, and, you know, what comes on the other side of sacrifice is blessing. And now look at where we are and look at where church is. I just think on the back of each of your sacrifices, this church has been built. And so the house of God is built on sacrifice. If you want to see this place reached, it's on sacrifice. Number four is that salvation comes through sacrifice. 
Um, this sacrifice stopped the plague. It saved Israel, the sacrifice that David made. Um, it, it was the site, this was the site of the greatest sacrifice. And the, the devourer was stopped. People saved due to the sacrifice. And so salvation comes through sacrifice. And it's not just the building. When we're talking about sacrifice to make the building, the building is just the vessel to see the people saved. And as we sacrifice, as we establish, you know, Ocean's Perth, we will see more people saved, an avenue for people to save. Let me just, some details. I just think some details are that, you know, right now it's hard to find a building. We've got Encounter Night in two weeks. Um, awesome. It's going to be great. God's hand. We trust Him. But it's logistically hard. It takes a lot of effort to find a building. We don't have a building for it yet. We're hoping that something comes through. Um, but just things like that, that's hard. Um, and, and, you know, we've got $80,000 in the bank, um, which is incredible. And your heart for the house giving is going to go towards the fit out costs for a new place. So once we hit 100, 120, then, then that money can be used. And, and let me tell you, to fit out a building, uh, a pre-existing like warehouse or something, it costs anywhere between 150 and 500,000. So we can do it, but we'll have to go into debt. But the more that we raise in the heart for the house, the more we sow into the future of Ocean's Church, the more poised we are to see salvations, the more poised we are to see people come into this place and be saved, to, to have a building that can be a vessel for that. So salvation comes through sacrifice and you're invited to be a part of the miracle. You know, if you're in this room, you're invited to see the devourer rebuked over your life, to see the provision of God in your life, to be a part of the miracle in this church. You know, I, I just believe that when you give, when you put God first in the area of your finance, all areas, but especially in the area of your finance, there will be new jobs, new doors opened, new opportunities, new business ideas, more financial freedom, just more joy, more satisfaction on the other side of putting God first and taking your dependence back to God. So I, I just want to invite you into Heart for the House as we join together next Sunday and we 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 make a pledge into the future of this church to pray and consider what that is for you. It's not about being the biggest. It's not about being, you know, it's, it's not about the amount. It's about what God's leading you through. Because let me tell you, the amount will be right if you put, if you go to God and ask for it. So pray and consider, you know, what generous sacrifice can you make? Um, you know, it's not about money. It's not about, it's not about the amount, but it's about our hearts aligning with God to see the miracle unfold and the miracle of reaching many people. And so where, as I said, we are in this next year, hoping that we can grow, we can continue to grow, fit out a building, see a place built. That's where we're heading in Oceans Perth. Oceans Albany is also doing incredible things. Everything you pledge towards Oceans Perth stays in Oceans Perth. It will be used for the facility. Um, but hey, let's continue to be generous. Let's continue to sacrifice and see what God's doing because there will be miracles. Let me tell you, there will be miracles. There'll be more people saved. Those numbers the fruit of the last season, the 40 um, baptisms, 50 salvations, they will be small compared to what's going to come in the future. And so God's got a great plan for this church and it's going to happen and He's inviting you to be a part of it. I think that's pretty cool. And so take your pledge cards home. You can also check out details on Ocean's Church, oceans.church forward slash house on our website and, uh, and pray about it this week. God, what are you calling me to give? Um, and, and really pray about that. But hey, we're just going to come into a bit of ministry time. Why don't we just stand um, where we are right now? You know, uh, I think the truth of this past season is that it has been hard. And I think when things are hard, people are tested. And when people are tested, you can sometimes get pushed a little bit off course. And, uh, and I don't know about you, but I feel in my heart, I, I just, I need to come back before God. I need to reassert my dependence on God. And so I don't know what God's doing in your life, but maybe that's you. And in the moment, what we're going to do is we're going to open up this altar right down here at the front for you just to come before the altar. You know, this is just a stage, but symbolically, it's the altar of God. And so we're going to do a symbolic act. If, if you feel like you need to, to come down the front in a moment and just get on your knees before God and say, God, I've been trying to do this myself. I've been trying to logic my way out of issues. I've been stressing and fearful. I want to be faith-filled. And so, yeah, if that's you, you can even start to come now. But, you know, this, I, I just love that story of David when he was brought to his knees uh, and his dependence was placed back into God. 
I just imagine if we did that as a church, if we got before on our knees before God, we might actually see some miracles break out. You know, maybe God's allowing you to go through a challenging time for this moment, for you to come back before God and get on your knees and see His favour renewed in your life, to go from independence to dependence. So come on, if that's you as a church, let's make that stand to get on our knees before God and say, God, I need you. I need you. I'm done trying to do it, might do it myself. I'm tired. I'm, I'm weary. But God, I want your power in my life. I want your power in my finance. I want your power over, you know, my mortgage, over my family, over my car payments, over my over my budget, God, over my job, over my career. God, I'm dependent in you. I'm done working it out. God, I want you. I want your power. Come on, let's begin to sing.